German Chancellor Angela Merkel announced in late October that she will not stand for re-election after her Christian Democratic Union Party, or CDU for short, was polled with an all-time low approval rating. Merkel still plans to remain as the head of government until the end of her term in 2021, but her political exit raises a lot of questions for Europe's largest economy. I'm your host Shirvan and welcome to Caspian Report. Before we continue, we would like to thank our sponsor, Vikings War of Clans, which was inspired by the famous strategy games of the 1990s like Age of Empires and the Command and Conquer series. Now, if you want to relive those memories, this game with pretty impressive graphics may just be what you're looking for. Support our channel by downloading Vikings free from the links in the description and get the special bonus of 200 gold coins and a protective shield. As members of the CDU reorient themselves with their next leader, the political orientation of the party will be an additional study. Since taking office, Merkel made numerous controversial concessions, such as the closure of Germany's nuclear power plants, the introduction of a minimum wage, and the legalization of same-sex marriage. By doing so, at the backdrop of the financial crisis of 2008, Merkel steered the conservative CDU to the center, yet she is most likely to be remembered for the bailout programs for the Eurozone countries and her decision to allow around a million asylum seekers to enter Germany. These latter decisions were particularly controversial within the ruling CDU, and they contributed to the emergence of Eurosceptic and nationalist groups such as the Alternative for Germany party. The entrance of such parties into German politics drained the support base of the CDU, but it also ignited an internal debate concerning the political orientation of the party. For instance, some groups within the CDU, led by Annegret kramp krauenbauer believed that the party must remain in the center and appeal to moderate voters. They largely share Merkel's political views. On the other side of the CDU fence, technocrat Friedrich Merch and health minister Jens Spahn argue for more conservative views on issues like the economy, immigration and EU integration. These conservative elements within the CDU believe that the party must return to its right-wing roots and compete against the Alternative for Germany party. The split within the CDU was for all to see during the party's conference on December 7th. Moderate candidate Kramp Krauenbauer was elected as the leader of the CDU with 517 votes out of 999, while conservative technocrat Friedrich Merz came second with 482 votes. If anything, the neck and neck race illustrates the growing identity crisis in the CDU. Another significant political dilemma comes from the CDU's partner in the government coalition, the center-left Social Democratic Party, or SPD for short. Over the past decade, the SPD's electoral influence has steadily declined, with the party having lost ground to other leftist groups such as the Linke and the environmentalist The Grünen. The SPD's worst post-war performance came in the 2017 general election, and since then the party has been undergoing an identity crisis of its own. Its leadership has reluctantly agreed to a coalition with the CDU in order to try and influence policies, yet within the SPD there are increasing calls to distance itself from the CDU and revitalize itself as an opposition party. In May 2019, elections will be held for the European Parliament, and if the SPD performs poorly there as well, it could mark the final straw that forces the party to withdraw from its partnership with the CDU. If that happens, the CDU will be left in power as a minority government and since no party has ever managed to govern Germany in such fashion, the CDU will either have to find a new partner to form a coalition government or early elections will be held. In Germany, political parties must win at least 5% of the vote to enter the Bundestag. In the past, extreme parties on the right and left failed to pass that requirement. In 2017, however, seven parties 
passed the 5% threshold, which resulted in the most polarized parliament in decades. If early elections are held, considering the ideological opposites within the CDU and the growing parties on the right and left, which chip away moderate voters, Germany's political landscape is likely to emerge even more fragmented than before. In the short term, the polarization of the German parliament will not have a dramatic impact on the operations of the European Union other than some delays of reforms. In the long term, however, as German politics becomes more polarized and the CDU takes a turn to the right, a worst case scenario would involve a partnership between the CDU and the Alternative for Germany party. Such a coalition government would have far reaching implications as it would tip the political balance in favor of Eurosceptic and nationalist forces across Europe. In the best case, the polarization of German politics would weaken Berlin's influence in the European Union and reduce the effectiveness of the bloc. However, if the CDU and the SPD maintain their coalition government and early elections are avoided, Merkel will govern without the pressure of re-election. This will allow the Chancellor to focus on her legacy. With little to lose, Merkel could opt to endorse EU integration plans that she deemed too controversial in the past, such as a banking union or a larger budget for the Eurozone. Still, there are limits to the political powers of the Chancellor. German law requires the Parliament to vote on matters that involve taxpayers' money and EU-related policies. So, although Merkel will enjoy greater freedoms than before, she cannot do whatever she pleases. Beyond politics, as Merkel relinquishes her position, the next Chancellor of Germany will also have to reconsider the country's economic orientation. Growth through exports has taken German industries to new heights, but at a time when global consumption is decreasing, it is an unbalanced economic model. There are efforts underway to address this issue, for instance, Berlin has set aside 1 billion euros for electric vehicle battery ventures and plans to invest another 3 billion euros in artificial intelligence by 2025. The government is also working towards energy sustainability and an economic diversification plan. Still, Germany relies far too heavily on exports. Nearly half of its GDP comes from it. That's the highest level of any advanced economy. With the way things are now, Germany is simply not prepared for the next financial crash. As the economic engine of the Eurozone, Germany's well-being affects everyone else. Italy, Spain and Greece currently have double-digit unemployment rates and high levels of public debt. It would only take a small nudge to tip their economies over. So when the next financial crash occurs, the next chancellor will be forced to extend scarce capital to rescue fellow Eurozone members while German citizens feel the pain of the recession. As such, Berlin must conduct economic reforms and make preparations to aid the EU since its collapse would be an even greater catastrophe. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, Germany has had three chancellors, Helmut Kohl, reunified the country and signed the Maastricht Treaty, thereby creating the European Union. Gerhard Schröder oversaw the introduction of the Euro and the enlargement of the European bloc into the East, and Angela Merkel guided Germany through the Great Recession, while keeping the Eurozone together. Whoever comes next will have an equally consequential role. In the coming decade, as China encroaches on European industries, while Russia bolsters its defense along the parameters of the continent and the interests of the United States and the European Union diverge, Merkel's replacement will have to design a European geopolitical response to a world that is in change. I've been your host Shirvan from Caspian Report. Credit goes to our contributors on Patreon for making this report possible. If you want to gain access to references, PDF files and early access, visit our community page on patreon.com slash caspianreport. In any case, thank you for your patience and so on.